what's going on everybody we are back again with another truck having regen problems Volvo B&L this one's a 2015 or 16 I'll have to check but back again having problems to where it will not force regen or not force regen but what it will not do a parked regen. this is about the second or third one nine times out of ten it's usually caused by it saying it needs a parked regen and the driver just refusing for some reason to do it which is all well and good until they come back and they get ready to leave out again and it does not work so what I'm gonna do is obviously first start it up but you can see already the trucks not even on the same part region needed plus it's flashing down here okay so anytime you see that flashing that's gonna be EPF indicators so all you got to do is come up here and look on the visor if it'll focus okay and it'll tell you so here it's saying that the dpf is full initiate a part regen and next available stop so from there i'm just going to turn the truck on all right it'll go through do its thing it's not showing any codes right come down here and look at the the ATS status come through all this stuff is fine and all it's saying is whether or not it's okay you can go into it trucks probably not hot enough by no means right now no yeah so see the engine temperature the same check on it now we're at the soot level now you can see that that soot level is extremely high me personally I hate having any soot on there whatsoever now before this motor goes into d-rate i'm fortunate enough to have the computer that has the volvo premium tech tool on here all right that we're able to do everything with now this is not paid for this is not an endorsement this is nothing i bought this um the system that i'm currently using is diesel laptops okay like i said it's got all the programming and software on there it's really good been able to do a whole lot with it okay so i had to restart the system and perform some updates on it you have to update this system like i believe it's every 30 or 45 days it may be longer than that it may be shorter but it's somewhere around in there and what that means is with the premium tech tool as it is on here is i can work offline and do this stuff in the yard on the side of the road it really doesn't matter but once it gets to a certain point, you have to get actual updates from the it'll put it in here. What I'm going to do, obviously you can see there's been a couple different work orders on this one. It actually got brought up the other night on the 5th, and I was messing with it probably around midnight. I did just call it a day for then, got them in another truck, got them out, and restarted on today. So all I'm going to do is just for me anyway. I enter the date as the work order number. And once all that goes through, this will highlight itself here. It does take just a minute sometimes, so you got to be patient with it. All right. So as you can see now, up here, it says DTCs with status active. Click diagnose to view DTCs. So I'm just going to click on that and see what it's doing that's not allowing this thing to park region. Problem is, you usually don't have this issue if you're able to do it when you are parked or if it does it while you're driving. Problem we run into more times than not is whenever that'll pop up, it just gets ignored. And the more that you continue to drive on that, the more soot that builds up then the more of the components that regulate all this start getting clogged up. Then you run into issues of getting clogged or getting to the point of where it's not going to work. And as you probably have saw in the other video, and I'll put the link down in the description for that, it becomes a pain. And eventually it goes into D-rate and can't do anything. So here it's saying the knock sensor in bank one circuits open, which that could be just a connector. Data link, that's an old code. Um that erratic intermittent or incorrect 
and the mechanical system not operating properly. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and clear these out because even with the computer being set up, I'm not able to do a forced regen with it still showing codes. So now it's going through the process, it's clearing all the codes up. You'll hear it kind of click and pop and make some different noises. That'll let you know that it's reset. But the problem, or the solution is more times than not that you want to check for is a clogged uh, seventh injector that runs on the downpipe from the turbo. The EGR temperature sensor, it's just got a connection on it. Sometimes that connection gets bad and if it's really sooted up, Oh God. Okay, so this just means that the system or whatever disconnected itself. But with that EGR sensor, and I've got one, or I've got a new one, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace it anyway. I'll show you it. But that is this is it, and that's the part number right here. If you need one. Try to get it open for you. And this plugs into the pipe obviously you can tell this right here is the sensor it goes into the pipe it picks up the readings on the temperatures of it and then it's just a little plug-in connector like that so let me get this restarted again and we'll go from there all right so i got the system the kinks in it worked out so what you're going to do in this system is up here at the top i don't know if you can see but right up here see where it says test this is where you're going to go into in order to perform the region so you go to the engine engine mounting and equipment click on it um, inlet and exhaust system and then down here you'll say exhaust after treatment system service regeneration so you double click on it come over here to start and understood all right so here you've got two different kinds of regions that you can do this one is just the DPF filter service regeneration and this bottom one is the diesel exhaust fluid crystal sublimination so what this is is once it gets really bad this bottom one here once it gets really bad you're gonna have all those crystals those white chunks that are gonna form down there so I'll just start with that one first because it, it runs at a higher temperature, burning all that stuff out, okay? So then here it'll give you the parameters on what you need in order to force this region itself. Once all that is correct, you just click on that confirmed, hit continue. All right, so once it brings this up, you're going to come down and look what the actual engine temperature is you go I'm going off this not the gauge alone all right so the engine cooling temperature is at 124 degrees I believe it has to be at 118 in order to even be able to do it it might be 130 all right but once you're ready to go you come up here and you'll see where this little play button is and you'll click it once if everything's good it'll go ahead and start it take this a minute but you can see down here all the different temperatures will start to raise right. so that is how you computer force regen the truck now obviously I know not everybody has a computer and they have and they try everything they possibly can to avoid going to the dealer for this exact same thing but unfortunately once it gets to a certain point you can take seventh injector out you can replace all the sensors that you want to do clean whatever possible part that you have you can try and clean all that and then attempt to go through the menu through the controller here and go to the actual region and request to do one it may not work all right but with this one 
it'll go through the process but if it doesn't actually go through the process and does what it's supposed to do then you're not doing any good here so I'm gonna let this one run for a minute and see what it does so here while it's doing its thing I'll go through and show you some of these different menus like what it's monitoring on the computer while it's doing this okay so this first one you're gonna see the exhaust gas temperature is about 586 degrees at the DPF filters here it's gonna show you it's about 878 to 880 and then the bottom one it's gonna be pushing closer to 900 the, it's gonna give you the fuel pressure the fuel shutoff valve the hydrocarbon dosing valve so the doser valve on here and then the after treatment purge air valve is going to show you all those percentages and whether or not they're working the dpf dif differential pressure and then the soot level the soot level is at 138 percent obviously that's what you're concerned with you want to bring that down that's what's causing these issues that's what's making the motor run like garbage um with this one we're actually burning off those crystals from where it's crystallized when i run the actual dpf or service region that's what's going to attack this soot level and bring it down hopefully tank level tank temperature pump rate and percent df pressure okay so you can see all of this is real time updating as we speak so everything there is looking good except for that NOx sensor on the inlet or the NOx inlet the sensor is not showing um, but we did not have any codes once it was cleared for that and it very well could be that sensor itself is just clogged from there being so much carbon or soot in there but you'll also notice sometimes the check engine lights on these Volvos come on when it's raining or it's wet or you've been somewhere extremely humid anything like that well those knock sensors will trip code all the time because the actual hookup adapter that's on it actual wiring inside of those is really success susceptible to any sort of moisture and once it gets in there it'll sit on the wires or the connectors and it'll trip a signal but as soon as it dries out you'll notice those codes go away or the check engine light will go off and that's just because there's no sort of grease that I know of that comes from the factory inside of those connectors that keep them dry or keep moisture out there's no moisture barrier there okay again and you're just monitoring all of this the turbos if you ever want to know if they have any issues it'll show you right here I mean I'm getting 55,000 rpms a so revolutions per minute the EGR position now this is going to give you all your EGR information it's going to show you the EGR temperature it's showing it is at 176 degrees again those connectors on those go bad I have not replaced this one yet but I'm going to do that here in just a minute or once we get all this straightened out do that if it doesn't burn all that off I should say we'll go ahead and replace it it's going to give you your fuel rate so right now we're burning almost say five gallons a minute because we are just sitting here but the motor or the engine is under load so it's at 16 percent under load there and we're between 4.5 and 4.8 gallons per minute just doing this it's parked so it's not going to allow you to get any speed this was basically just to let anybody that doesn't have access to it or need it or ever was curious as to what takes place when they plug the computer up and what it's reading. I mean, I can read anything on here that I want to. It's just when you hear people say forced regen, forced regen, you got to take it to the dealer, plug it into the computer. This is what they're looking at. Okay. So we just got the last diesel exhaust fluid crystal elimination cycle. We just got it done. All right. And if you come back over here, over here, it's now sh showing that the soot gauge or the soot level is pretty much non existent. That is going to be how a forced computer regen works. 
just to let it finish up. And then as far as the sensor goes, I'll go in here in just a minute and show you where this one needs to be hooked up at. So as far as replacing that EGR temperature sensor, it goes in right here. You take that nut off of the 17, and then the wiring harness is right there. You unclip that, screw it back in, you're good to go.